Hi, welcome yet to another topic in agricultural extension. Today's topic will look at ways of extending shelf life of raw milk. And the big question is, why raw milk at this time and age? There are many reasons. One of them is that uh, worldwide, about 1 billion people are not connected to electricity, which is important for milk processing and uh, cooling that, uh, that, uh, keep, that uh, assists in keeping the milk for wrong. Another reason is consumer preference. Uh, for example, in areas where I come from, uh, that is in Kenya, consumers prefer raw milk because they are in close proximity to the producers. So they just buy the milk from the farm or milk that is transported by transporters from the farm uh, to the consumers and they just uh, use it before it is processed. Another one is the level of uh, processing. In areas, especially uh, where milk is produced by small-scale farmers, like in Kenya, where I come from, only 25% or less of the 5 billion liters of milk produced annually is processed. The rest is consumed in its raw form. So there are many reasons why milk uh, is consumed before it is uh, processed, and therefore the need to extend shelf life. So when we talk of shelf life, we talk of the time that the milk can keep and it, it remains safe consum for consumption and also retains its desired characteristics, chemical, physical, and biological qualities and others. And when do we say that milk is spoiled? Or how can you know that milk is spoiled? Uh, you can use your common senses. That is a sight, smell, taste, touch. By looking at milk, you can see whether it has changed its color from the normal white color to other colors like brown, red, and all that. You can see whether it has changed its consistency from something liquid to something solid or then solid, and so on. So even by looking at milk, you can see, you can know that it is spoiled. What are the causes of milk spoilage? There are many. Uh, the include or the major cause is microorganisms. And bacteria is the predominant cause of milk spoilage. Others like fungi can also play a role, but bacteria is the major cause of milk spoilage. Isomatic cell cells also cause uh, milk spoilage. Somatic cells are the body or the other linings of the animal where milk is produced and which when the animal has subclinical mastitis or even mastitis, mastitis is the infection of the udder, the milk that is produced from that animal, especially the subclinical mastitis, which you cannot be able to detect by just looking at it, it has to be taken to the laboratory for, confir for confirmation. Then it has, the milk has high somatic cell. We say it has high somatic cell count. And these cells, they also contain bacteria and they also cause milk as spoilage. Uh, environmental temperatures, like uh, uh, environmental factors, like temperature, high temperatures, oxygen and light also contribute to milk spoilage. So who should uh, assist in extending the shelf life of warm milk? Everybody in the value chain who is involved in handling milk should ensure that it is handled or practices good uh, handling practices that ensure that milk keeps for long. At the production level or at the farmer's uh, stage, anything that is used to handle milk should be clean. The cleaning equipments, <coughs> the cleaning equipment and tools, uh, the milking para, the milking shed. The milker, everybody should be clean. Because at milking, the milk has very low bacterial count and therefore can keep for some time uh, without going bad. After milking, the milk should be sieved or filtered, further reduce the few bacteria that are found in milk at milking. 
After that, the milk should be kept in a cool environment. And in a cool environment, we are talking in the rural areas where there is low or no electricity connectivity, or even where there is electricity connectivity, there is fluctuation in supply of electricity, and therefore the milk has to be kept cool using other methods. And even in the rural areas, there are facilities like the charcoal fridges, the solar fridges that can keep milk cool. In the absence of this, uh, a milk can can be put in a container that has water, because water also has low temperatures and can assist in uh, ensuring that the milk is cool. At the transportation level, the transporters have to time uh, when the, the, uh, the environmental temperatures are low so that the milk does not spoil. And this can be early in the morning or uh, in the evening. The transporters also, I'm talking of the small-scale transporters who don't have shearing facilities, can, should also ensure that, that the, the cans used to transport milk are kept in a uh, crossed status so that uh, dust, bacteria, and other environmental contaminants don't uh, contaminate the milk, thus enhancing the spoilage. The containers also should be made of uh, easily cleanable materials like uh, aluminium. Aluminium cans are very good for transporting milk because they are easily cleanable. And these cans also should have open necks that will allow one to clean all parts of that container. There's a tendency by these uh, small scale transporters to use uh, plastic jerry cans that are easily affordable, that are affordable and available. But these jerry cans have hidden corners that are not easily cleanable. And therefore, they retain bacteria for long. And thus, when you put milk in these containers, even for a short time, it uh, gets uh, spoiled. The consumer has the highest uh, uh, role to play in ensuring that the milk stays for long because uh, the purpose of milk is to consume it. And also, at this time of COVID-19, when uh, consumers are buying uh, products in bulk, and keeping them at home because they wanted to implement the COVID-19 control measures, like keeping distance, social distancing, and all that. So the consumers now would like to extend the milk for long. And in places where there is no electricity, and then they have used other methods like clean utensils. They have to boil the milk and then cool it. Alternating boiling and cooling keeps the milk for long. Because boiling kills the bacteria uh, and cooling uh, ensures that the temperatures are not favorable for bacteria, uh, for bacterial uh, multiplication. And these consumers include households, schools, other institutions, hotels, and uh, milk outlets in the rural areas where there is no electricity. Now, even after cooling and boiling, the milk is likely to ferment because even processed products have a shelf life. It is only cheese and wine whose qualities improve with the time. All the other products, they spoil with time and milk will ferment, especially if it has been boiled and cooled. It will not go, just go bad, it will just ferment. And this fermented milk is good. It can be consumed consumed at the household level. It can be consumed by calves and even dogs. The only precaution to take is to ensure that you introduce this fermented milk gradually to the consumer, otherwise it will uh, cause a stomach upset. So in summary, milk uh, sifting or filtering reduces the bacterial load. Milk boiling kills the bacteria. Uh, milk cooling uh, ensures that the temperatures are not favorable for bacteria. Covering the milk ensures that there is no environmental contamination. And if you do this, your milk will keep for long. And you will enjoy uh, taking it uh, in whatever form you use uh, for a period of time. At temperatures of between 20 and 25 degrees centigrade, it is possible uh, to keep uh, milk for 48 hours if it is boiled at an interval of 24 hours. 
even it can sometimes it can go up to 72 hours. But if the environmental temperatures are higher, then the time used to boil the milk might be uh, shorter or should be shorter. So there is a tendency by the small scale producers to use chemical preservatives uh, to preserve milk. These preservatives are not good because they harm the body. And these chemicals that are normally used include formarin, hydrogen peroxide, and even lactoperoxidase. Lactoperoxidase is an enzyme that is normally found in the normal milk, and it assists in keeping the milk uh, in good quality for the first few hours. But if these uh, products have not been standardized to know how much should be used, and even approved, then they should not be used at all. So uh, this brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have liked it, please give it a thumbs up and remember to share it with others. Uh, and if you are new to this uh, channel that takes a glance at the past, present, future, and technical issues in agriculture, please remember to subscribe. Hit the, the button on my bottom left and subscribe so that uh, you can get updated. Otherwise. Thank you very much for watching and thank you.